Hi everyone, I'm Kenan from Cars and Bids, and today... Woo! We're talking about a very special car. This is a Porsche Cayman GT4 RS, and in today's video, we're going to do what we normally do. We're going to talk about its facts and figures. First, we're going to talk about where this car fits into Porsche's past. Then we're going to get nerdy and talk about some of the technical details of this car, and then we're gonna take it for a drive. And to be honest, that's all I really wanna do. And with that, let's get started. But before I get going, big news, as you might expect, this GT4 RS is currently for sale, being auctioned live on, you guessed it, cars and bids. As I mentioned, this is a 2023 model, and it comes with some very desirable factory equipment, including Porsche's carbon ceramic brakes, PCCBs, the sport carbon fiber bucket seats, and the front axle lift, which is a very important option in this car. And after you finish watching this video, click the link in the description below where you can head to the live auction of this one, where you can bid on it and buy it only on Cars and Bids. And we begin the story of the Cayman GT4 RS by talking about its convertible origins. And that, of course, is the Boxster. In the 1990s, Porsche was in dire financial straits and they wanted to come up with an entry-level car to supplement the 911. And so when they developed the 996 generation 911, they also developed the 986 generation Boxster. And again, the idea with that was it would provide an entry-level sports car. But unlike the 911, the engine would be mounted in the middle of the car. And Doug and Alanis have already done a video talking about this car, so I'm not really going to get into the details of it. But needless to say, the car is a huge success for Porsche, and it's one of the cars that, well, helped save the brand and why they're around today. But the German engineers started to get curious. The car was so good and had such great handling, they wondered, hmm, what would happen if we put a roof on the Boxster? And so in 2006, they did exactly that. They put a roof on the Boxster and they gave us the 987 generation Cayman. That car immediately proved to be very popular. It was lauded by automotive journalists as being potentially the Porsche to have. The engine was mounted in the middle, which was more optimal for hardcore driving compared to the rear engine 911. However, this comparison between Cayman and 911 would be something that would plague the Cayman for its whole life. Porsche always went out of their way to make sure that that car wasn't as good or as fast or as powerful as its 911 relative because that was the flagship car. You couldn't have the entry-level car be like that. So Porsche always found ways to make it not quite as good, but engineers would hint at how good the Cayman could be by giving us special versions of it throughout its history. One example would be the Cayman R. This was a lightweight, slightly more powerful version of the Cayman, and it taunted journalists because it was an excellent car, but it didn't get a 911 engine. It didn't have the power of a 911, and so as good as it was, it was just not quite as good as it could have been. For the next generation of Cayman though, Porsche would hand the car over to their GT department and they would give us the GT4. Now critically, that had a 911 engine in it. It had the six cylinder that was shared with the Carrera S, but it would have a lot of other cool touches. It would have a revised front fascia, lots of adjustable components, and like I said, a real 911 engine in the middle of it. But the major complaint with that car was that the gearing was very tall. Porsche wanted to make sure again that it didn't step on the toes of the 911 and so it had very tall gearing. And as a result, that car is still lauded by enthusiasts as being one of the best driving Porsches ever made, but the gearing was known as an Achilles heel for that car. But then came this car. This is the 718 generation GT4 RS. Now, Porsche makes a 718 GT4 as well, and that car is a fantastic car in its own right. But Porsche wanted to finally go all the way with the Cayman, and they gave us an RS version of it. Now, this is a lot of history and a lot of background, but it's important that I give that to you because it underscores how important this car is. Porsche has said that internal combustion engines and naturally aspirated engines in particular are going to become something of the past. And so Porsche had one last opportunity to celebrate how great a naturally aspirated engine could be in a Cayman, and they did so 
with the GT4 RS. Before we talk about the engine though, there are a lot of cool RS details we have to go over because being an RS car for the Cayman is a huge deal and Porsche went to extreme lengths to incorporate some cool stuff into this car. And we start by talking about lowering its curb weight. That's right, Porsche wanted to make sure this car was even lighter than the GT4. And they did so by using lots of aluminum, but a lot of CFRP, which stands for Carbon Fiber Reinforced Polymers. Now, Porsche points out that they use it in a number of places. The fenders of this car are made of carbon fiber, but more obviously in this car would be the hood. When you open the hood of this car, you can see the tight carbon fiber weave, and frankly, it's very obvious that this is made of carbon fiber the second you open it, because it doesn't weigh anything. And Porsche would use carbon fiber elsewhere throughout the car, and the result of all of this weight savings means that this car weighs about 50 pounds less than the equivalent automatic GT4, which might not sound like much, but when you're focused on a lightweight track driving experience, every pound matters. And this car only weighs about 3,200 pounds which is excellent for a modern day car. The next chapter of the GT4 RS's story has to do with its aerodynamics. And Porsche spent a lot of time introducing very cool aerodynamics into this car. We begin by talking about the front lip. On the front of this car, they revised the aerodynamic splitter completely. So much so that when you look inside the fender wells, the air spats for that whole front diffuser are actually adjustable, meaning that you can dial in or out more downforce from the front of the car, depending on your driving capabilities and where you're going to be using the car. But that wasn't the only part that they revised on the front of this car. The next most obvious thing would be these NACA ducts located in the hood. On the standard GT4, you don't have these, but for this car, Porsche wanted to get extra brake cooling into these massive six piston brakes. And so with these NACA ducts, they feed tubes that then route more air to cool the brakes down. And speaking of the brakes and the wheel well area, Porsche introduced these vents on top of the fender that are reminiscent of the previous generation 991 GT3 RS. The idea with these is that they relieve negative air pressure. As the wheel spins within the fender, it generates air pressure, and so to relieve that and keep the front end more stable, Porsche introduced these special vents. But the aerodynamics don't end there. Porsche also introduced these relief cuts inside the fenders. So the fenders aren't totally round. They have these sort of straight lines on the side of the car to, again, clean up the airflow alongside. But this isn't the only time that they've done this. They also did this with the famed Porsche GT1 from the 1990s. Now, of course, that was a race car and they made some street versions of that, but the idea is the same. You wanna clamp the airflow down the side of the car. And so it has these relief cuts in the fenders. And the aerodynamic story continues with the back of this car. And we have to talk about its gigantic rear wing. Now, like the GT3, Porsche used this famed swan neck design. And the reason it's called this is, well, it looks like a swan, an ugly swan, albeit. It's an elegant design, but an ugly swan. But nonetheless, they used this design with the Cayman GT4 RS. And the logic behind this is, because the wing is suspended from the top, it cleans up the airflow, which allows this car to generate more downforce and not have a disturbing airflow pattern behind it. And so it's functional, but it's one of the most interesting shared parts with the GT3. And the last part of the aerodynamic puzzle with the GT4 RS has to do with the rear diffuser. Now this part isn't unique to the GT4 RS because it was actually shared with the GT4 Club Sport, but again it helps accelerate the airflow out the back of the car and generate more downforce. With all of these aerodynamic tweaks combined, this car actually generates 25% more downforce than the GT4, which already had lots of downforce. But this is the ultimate performance version of the GT4 RS. And so having all of this downforce is really important, especially when you wanna take this car to the track. To handle all of this aerodynamic load, Porsche needed to revise the suspension for this car, and they started by increasing the spring rates. The front is just over twice as stiff as that found in the GT4, and the rear is just under twice as stiff. But interestingly, the shocks that are found within those springs are actually the same units that are on the GT4, but Porsche tuned them slightly differently so that they would match the increased spring rate. But the suspension tweaks didn't end there. Porsche went to a fully ball joint suspension for this car, and the result of that is that the car is even stiffer, but it also means that the car handles even better and you have more exacting inputs as you're driving this car, which again is important with the track-focused version of the GT4 RS. And since this car was designed to be taken to the track, adjustability was really important for Porsche, and so most of the suspension 
is adjustable. From things like the sway bar, which has different holes drilled into it so you can dial in or out the amount of body roll depending on your needs, all the way to the toe, caster, and camber of the suspension, meaning that you can truly customize this car to meet your driving needs or the driving demands of the circuit that you're on. And while we're up here in the front of this car, we have to talk about this car's brakes. Porsche spent a lot of time refining the brakes for this car to make them even more track worthy. They did this by adding six piston calipers at the front and four piston calipers at the rear. Now, the calipers themselves are made out of aluminum to decrease the weight and increase the strength, and Porsche would offer two different types of brake discs with this car. You get the steel versions, or you could get what this car has, the PCCBs, the Porsche Carbon Ceramic Brakes. Another interesting change that Porsche would make would have to do with the brake bias. They would shift it slightly rearward in this car because they want to maximize the ability to trail brake this car so you could brake later into corners and maximize those braking zones while you're driving on the track. And speaking of the track, we now move inside the GT4 RS to talk about its transmission. Now this comes with Porsche's dual clutch PDK transmission. And Porsche cites the reason for that being in this car as opposed to a manual, which is not available, is that if you're buying this car, you're buying it to drive on the racetrack where lap times really matter. And so Porsche wanted to give you the fastest shifting transmission possible, and that would be their PDK gearbox. Now inside this gearbox housing, which is shared with the GT4, we finally have shorter gearing. The gears in this transmission are actually shared with that found in the 991.2 GT3 RS. Now this is beneficial because you can use more of the engine more of the time. It keeps you in the rev range of this engine, which is really important because this is a very high revving, naturally aspirated engine. And so having those shorter gears are very beneficial. Now, as I mentioned, this car is not available with a manual transmission, and that is a little bit of a concession for those of us who worship at the altar of the third pedal. But nonetheless, Porsche finally gave us the short gearing that we've always wanted in a Cayman GT product. And now it's time to talk about the star of the show with the GT4 RS, and that is undoubtedly its engine. This is a four liter naturally aspirated flat six that's shared with the GT3, and it makes pretty excellent power. It makes 493 horsepower and 331 foot-pounds of torque. Now, critically, that's about 10 less than the GT3. Porsche just couldn't help themselves, and they had to make sure the engine made slightly less power than that found in the GT3. Now, Porsche cites that the reason for this has to do with the exhaust routing of this car. They say that they had to make it slightly longer, just given the packaging constraints of the Cayman, but regardless, it makes about 10 horsepower less. But you know what? We'll take it. Now, speaking of the GT3 engine, that engine actually shares its roots with the 991.2 Speedster. One of the biggest additions that engine got had to do with the throttle bodies. It has individual throttle bodies, or ITBs. Now, the benefit of those is that they allow more direct airflow into each cylinder, increasing the performance of the car, but more critically, they give you even more precise and exact throttle control over the engine, which is critical in a car like this. But Porsche wasn't focused on just that aspect for air management in this car. They also added a totally new induction system. These vents that are located on the outside of the car where the rear three quarter windows used to be, that's right, you used to be able to see out of these, have actually become intakes for the engine. They funnel air into these tubes which feed the plenum, which is directly behind the passengers. It's inside the passenger compartment of this car. Now, I can't think of too many cars that share that with the GT4 RS. The McLaren F1 is one of the few that comes to mind, but it is so cool because it just allows the driver to be immersed in this incredible sound that this car generates. You can hear all of the air flowing into the cylinders, and it's just cool. Now, of course, all of this has been done to increase the performance of this car, but one of the great byproducts is that you have a front row seat to one of the best sounding six cylinder engines ever made, both for the passenger and for the driver. <laughs> All right, we're driving the GT4 RS, and right away... It's unbelievable! Hearing the induction noise in this car right behind your head is one of the coolest sounds I have ever heard in any road car. It's utterly insane, and you just want to constantly play with the gears so you can hear... That sound! It's, it's just... It's just unbelievable. And wherever your foot is on the throttle, you can hear 
each of the summers breathing in air. I, I, I can't even, I can't exaggerate this enough. Like, I'm, I swear to God, I'm not being hyperbolic about it. It's that amazing. Like, it, it just sounds so incredible. And the gearbox is so fast and it revs so quickly and you have so much throttle control. It's no wonder this car is revered as being potentially the greatest standard production Porsche ever built. Oh, it's so glorious. My God, that is that is just, <laughs> it's just intoxicating. Um, and obviously this car is incredibly fast, makes a lot of power. Yes, it's not quite as much as the GT3, but to be honest with you, it's a lot of power. Uh, and it's so emotionally involving. I've said it once before and I'll say it again. A lot of people say that Porsches, you know, in particular German cars in general, are kind of, you know, heavy on engineering, light on emotion. Not in this thing. Oh, the, this, the sounds this car makes, it's so visceral and alive uh, and it makes you feel that way. It, it's just, it's so, it's just so exciting. I mean, it's just, it's just frankly, it's incredible. The way this car sounds is just, just unbelievably good. Um, and all of the inputs just directly translate to the road. Now, granted, I'm like driving on public roads, so I can't thrash this thing or anything like that. And I, I don't want to, it's not my car. And it's a very expensive car at that. Um, but you can immediately tell like everything just is like the, the suspension communicates so well. The steering is so deeply accurate. The throttle response is incredible. The, the whole package is just unbelievable. And I can you can see why these cars are so revered and desired. It's just, it's so good. And then on top of it all, you've got that engine, which is, that last thousand RPM, it sounds like a buzzsaw. <laughs> it's just awesome. This is unreal though, like I, I am blown away. I was very fortunate when uh, when Doug had uh, the car, when it had a GT4 RS on test, I got to go for a ride in that car uh, and it blew my mind then as a passenger. But as a driver, to be in control of that symphony, I mean, you're practically playing a musical instrument. That's more what it feels like. <laughs> oh, it is so good. Um, now Porsche made a lot of uh, a lot of decisions with this car to really you know go all the way with the RS. I think they realized that you know naturally aspirated engines are going away, and they wanted to give do what they I suspect all the engineers always wanted to do, which was give the Cayman the full Monty, give it all of the performance um, that you could want, give it a real give it a GT3 engine and see what it could do. And the result, the result's just amazing. Um, you know, this is this car is a celebration. It's a celebration of driving. It's a celebration of the naturally aspirated engine. It's just, it's a seminal car for Porsche. And I truly feel my heart, as I have since I got to experience it for the first time, that it is one of, if not the greatest standard production Porsche, you know, excluding their supercars, the Carrera GT. Um, that the company's ever made. Personally, maybe it's a little bit of a hot take. I am more of a fan of induction noise compared to exhaust. And this car delivers the goods better than almost anything I have ever experienced. <laughs> wow, it's just wow. Oh my God. Oh, magnificent, utterly, utterly magnificent. And that is the Porsche GT4 RS. This is a truly exceptional car that touts an amazing flat six engine, but not just any engine, it has the engine from a GT3. It also handles as well as you would expect the RS version of the GT4 to handle, and it has the most amazing induction noise I have ever heard in a road car. And if you don't want to wait in the long line at your Porsche dealership to get one of these, well, you can bid on this one and buy it only on Cars and Vids. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will talk to you very soon. What a car. Goodbye.